Hi, I'm Jason from Cirque Rentals. And today I'm gonna to show you how to set up the Big Agnes Copper Spur HVUL1 bike packing tent. This is an awesome tent for all around bike packing use, uh, especially for uh, obviously solo trips. Um, I like it for backpacking as well because it's so compact and easy to pack up. Uh, the bike packing design means you have shorter poles, they're 12 inch uh, pole sections instead of the, tr the traditional 18 inch pole sections. And that just makes it so much more packable uh, and easy to split up um, when you're setting it up on your bike or setting it up in your backpack. Uh, and the other nice thing about the Big Agnes bike packing series is that they come in these bike pack ready stuff sacks. And so you have daisy chains all along the tent bag, uh, as well as compression straps. Uh, and the kit comes from Big Agnes with, uh, a, a, I think, four different sized uh, Velcro straps. So from the store, from the rental fleet, ready to go, you can take this, grab those Velcro straps, strap it to your handlebars, and take off uh, on a solo bike packing trip. So uh, we love uh, the bike packing tents by Big Agnes. Just great design, uh, really well done um, on the stuff sack and, and the tent itself. Let's show you how to set it up. First thing we'll do here is loosen up our compression straps kind of our outer straps. Take out our steak bag. Next we'll take out our tent body. And like all Big Agnes tents, uh, your clip-in ribbon points are color coordinated. Um, so you have silver on one side and orange on the other side. Uh, orange is usually going to be near the foot of the tent um, on most Big Agnes tents, and so that's one uh, easy way to check. Uh, I'm going to set this tent up a little bit backwards from how I would normally set it up, just so that the door is facing the camera. Um, so I'm going to take the orange straps, the, the side that you would normally have for your feet, uh, and I'm going to put those kind of here. It's a little bit uphill. Normally I'd want my head to be facing uphill, but I've checked my area. I've made sure there aren't any big rocks or pine cones or thorns underneath where I'm setting up my tent kind of space out the tent the way I'd like it. For today's demo, we're not using the footprint, but we always do recommend using a footprint. It helps protect the tent. It also helps keep you a little bit drier uh, if you do find yourself in a rainstorm. And with the bike packing tents, um, the footprint has an extra vestibule section, which is really nice. Um, both allows you to do a, a fast fly or quick pitch installation, uh, as well as just have a little bit extra coverage uh, in the vestibule for your gear, which is super nice. Uh, next we'll take out our poles here and you have two pole sections on the copper spur series including the bike pack uh, one is for the structure of the tent and the other is for a cross stabilizer which is in here somewhere i think Feels like we're missing a pole. Again, these are color coordinated, the poles and the ribbons. So you have orange poles, which will go on the orange ribbon side. And then we have silver poles, which will go on the silver ribbon side. <clears throat> and Big Agnes uses a proprietary design called tip lock, which makes it really easy to keep this, the tent poles in the grommets. A lot of the older style tents that you set up, you'll pop one pole in, and then as you go to the other side, that pole pops out and just gets difficult. These are nice and sturdy and kind of stay in place once you, you clip them in. All right, we've got our main body of the tent set up here, our main structure. Now we're gonna go ahead and clip our ribbons. If it was windy out at this point, I would go ahead and stake it just so that the tent doesn't blow away at least one corner. In this case, since it's not windy, I'm gonna go ahead and set the tent up first, and then we can adjust it with the stakes once we've got it where we like it. <clears throat> All right, so we've got our main structure up. There we are. I knew we were missing a pole section. 
that's your stabilizer bar and you can tell the difference it's going to have the rounded knobs on the end uh, and that's what i was looking for before i usually pull that one out first and set it aside so you're going to clip it into these plastic grommets on the edge of the tent and it goes over your structure pull that just helps kind of lift the tent up and then spread it out and that gives you nice vertical sidewalls which allows you to have a lot of room a lot of volume and a lot of head height uh, on the inside of the tent which is really nice now you can see you've got a really large door opening here uh, for the solo. Um, you just kind of sit down, get your stuff sorted, slide your feet in, uh, and you're good to go. Really easy to get in and out of. You can also see here on the side, you've got your helmet strap, uh, which allows you to clip in your helmet um, on the outside of the tent, save some space inside. Uh, but the helmet remains protected by your rain fly, uh, which is really nice on that feature. <clears throat> At this point, we're going to go ahead and stake out the tent. Uh, we've checked our area. We, we like where we're at, so we're going to go ahead and stake it. Here are those little Velcro straps I mentioned before that you can use to strap it to your handlebar, your bike frame, uh, or maybe your pinion rack. All right, so I'm going to start with one corner. Doesn't really matter which corner you start with. And then I like to go opposite corner. It helps me kind of pull lengthwise and widthwise across the tent. Just give it a gentle pull. We just want to make sure that we spread the body of the tent out, the floor of the tent. Do the same over here. And then our last stake here, again, kind of pulling both out and back. And what we're trying to do is just spread the floor out uh, as tight as possible. So we have as much floor space inside the tent as we can. And then you saw how I packed this tent previously. I like to uh, do my, my rain fly last when I'm setting up. So I always stuff that first when I'm packing up my tent. And we have that here now. We'll go ahead and get that installed. Again, your ribbons are color coordinated. So you're just gonna look for your silver ribbons for the front of the tent and your orange ribbons for the back of the tent. Make sure you have it right side up before you start clipping things. I like to kind of do a loose hang of the fly first, make sure everything is kind of positioned the way it's supposed to be and then I'll start clipping. So now we're gonna clip the ribbons in to the clips on the tent body. As we come across this section, I'm gonna go ahead and clip the stabilizer pole into these pockets on the rain fly. And these are designed to help with the durability of the tent, it also just helps add some stability if you're in a, a really kind of windy storm or heavy rain. We'll do that on both sides. And it's a little easier to do before you've got gotten everything staked out. All right, both pockets are in. All right, we've got it all clipped in there. And you can see it's already pretty nice and tight. We're gonna wanna stake out our door and then we'll stake out a few guy lines on the outside of the tent as well. Now for the door, since we know we're gonna be entering on this side, we wanna make sure that we don't use that ribbon. We wanna use the opposite ribbon so that we can open the door. So we're just going to go ahead and pull that out. Don't rip the tent. These are gentle fabrics. But pull it nice and tight. And now you have this nice vestibule area in the front of the tent here where you can store your, your pack and any of your gear, some of your other biking gear or backpacking gear. And then I'm going to go ahead and guy out the fly 
This does two things for us. It helps protect us from the rain by pulling that rain fly out away from the tent. Allows the rain to just sort of drip off. It also allows airflow. It allows air to come up underneath the tent, underneath the rain fly, and circulate so you don't get as much condensation on the inside of the tent. There's one more guy out point on the back here. So I'm gonna pull that one out as well. Just pulls the rain fly out a little bit there. And I appear to be a stake short, otherwise I would go ahead and stake this side out as well. Since you can't see the back, I'll go ahead and use that one. And you see that just pulls that out. And then of course, I always recommend popping out your ventilation flap. Again, that allows more air flow through. You'll have less condensation and build up on the inside of the tent uh, as you're sleeping. And then you have a series of guy out points on the exterior of the tent as well. If you find yourself in heavy wind conditions, uh, that's really nice to have. And then on top here, you can see the gear daisy chain where you can stuff or clip uh, wet biking gloves, wet bike shorts, jerseys, uh, things like that that you, you might not want inside the tent, that you might want to allow to dry and breathe and air out a little bit. Uh, on the outside of the tent. So that's another nice feature that you only find on the bike packing series. And then here we'll just show you the door section. A couple different ways that you could store this door. You can roll it and toggle it like this. You could also unzip this whole side, roll it up and toggle it at the top. You see these toggles here. Uh, and then that also allows you to flip the top up if you have some trekking poles with you or perhaps you know two bikes with uh, you know larger handlebars, you can set up the tent in awning mode and have a little awning here over top of the door. Nice. And then this Really good access to the tent itself and you know you can sit here and manage your gear getting in the tent you just kind of pop your legs back slide your feet in, and you're in the tent and good to go plenty of uh, head height in here when I'm sitting up and you know changing clothes or reading or doing whatever I need to do inside the tent uh, and there's several really large gear loft spaces and what we call attic spaces in the tent where you can store uh, different things that you need quick access to uh, phones, headphones, lantern, headlight, things like that. So that's an overview on the setup for the Big Agnes Copper Spur HVUL1 bikepacking tent. Uh, now I'll just quickly show you how to take it down, just the opposite uh, of, of setting it up. And we'll start by taking the stakes off of the rain fly and closing up the doors. I always like to close everything so that everything is zipped and closed when I'm setting up the tent and that just makes it a little bit easier when you're staking things out. Sometimes if you don't do that you'll stake things out and then you'll realize the zipper won't allow you to open or close the door or something something like that which is no fun. <clears throat> All right. Now we'll go ahead and unclip our rain fly. Again, pay attention to those little pockets on the underside of the rain fly here which clip onto that stabilizer bar. Rainfly is wet either from rain or from condensation on the inside. At this point in camp, if I can stay in camp for a little while, maybe I'm making breakfast or packing up other gear, I'll try and hang this up or get it into the sun and let it dry out a little bit before I pack it. Uh, obviously the drier it is when you pack it, the better. 
regardless, when you get home, you're going to want to unpack everything and dry it out anyway. Um, but it's just nice to try and get it as dry as possible when you're in camp. So as I mentioned, the rainfly is the last thing I usually put on the tent. So I will typically pack this first, unless I know I'm going to be in heavy rain conditions, in which case I might want to do what they call a, a fast fly or a quick pitch uh, setup, which is a setup that doesn't use the tent body, but uses the rain fly with the poles. And if I think I might be doing that or need to do that, in those situations, I may pack the tent body first and the rain fly last. So I have quick access to the rain fly uh, when I get to camp. All right, so our next step will be to remove our stabilizer pole. Now we're gonna unclip the body of our tent. Sometimes your stake ribbon will get looped around the bottom of the pole. You just sometimes will need to loosen a stake before you pop that out. You can kind of maybe see that here where it's loop, looped around the pole itself. All right. And then I generally start breaking the poles down in the center. I've heard that that helps alleviate tension or extra force on a shock cord. It might help your shock cord last a little bit longer. I've not proven that to be true, but I found it to be a good practice. I'll go ahead and take the stake or the tent poles, slide them into the pole bag here. And now I'm going to go around and just pull my remaining stake so I make sure everything is clean and organized. If it was really windy while I'm taking my tent down, I will often leave one stake to the very end so that my tent doesn't go flying off into the wind into another campsite or into a stream or a river or the trees or something. Then I often take just a little towel, a little pack towel, and I'll clean off my stakes a little bit. They don't need to be perfect, but you don't don't need to pack all that extra dirt. It's just extra weight to carry on your way home. So we'll go ahead and stuff those stakes in. If we're not using our Velcro straps to strap the, the bag to our, our bike, we'll go ahead and stuff that away. Again, just trying to keep everything nice and tidy. All right, now for the tent body. We don't recommend folding these tents. If you fold them the same way every time, uh, you can start to create kind of long lasting grooves. You can also wear sort of dirt and debris into the tent uh, and cause some excessive wear on the tent itself. So we teach people just stuff it. it. May help the tent last a little bit longer. It also seems to be a little bit faster putting it away and it can be a little bit quicker taking it out as well. Tuck our steak bag in the top here. This is usually the first thing I grab when I get to camp. Close that up. Clip our hood over. I 
And then we have our little compression straps. We can kind of tighten everything down. And there we are, all packed up. That's the Copper Spur HVUL1 bike packing tent by Big Agnes. Great all around tent for any of your solo trips with your uh, bike or if you're backpacking, it's a great tent for that as well.